and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Five signs your knee pain is a meniscus tear. We're going to show you self-tests for your cartilage. This is actually an updated video. We did it once before. Right. Uh, and we're going to do it better this we're time. We're going to try to improve upon Absolutely. it. Absolutely. By the way, if you're new to our channel, oh. please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, this week, you're going to want to join us on our website, bobandbrad.com, and go to the giveaway section because we're giving away... Sleepovation! Mattress! That's right. A Wait, full we've, got, mattress. we've got something... Here, we're going to cover up. Yeah, there we go. And actually, a couple of their pillows, too, we're going to give away. These are awesome pillows and mattress. Check them out. Go to the website. You can also go to bobandbrad.com. Oh, yes. Uh, Bob and Brad on Facebook. It'll, the contest will be pinned to the top of the page. Want a short version of us? Go to Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. That's enough self-promotion, That's Brad. right, Bob. Okay, and now, and at the end of the video, we are going to add in a bonus. We're going to show uh, two range of motion exercises for the injury as well as strengthening. Uh, so hold on for that. So let's talk about meniscus. Meniscus always is hard for me to explain to a patient unless I have a model of the knee. Sure. Uh, so we're going to start out with Sam first, yeah. and we're going to go down to his knee. And this knee is just bony. We do have some ligaments and some soft tissue on this one. So this represents the patella or the kneecap with the tendons going to and from it. We're going to remove that. You got that? And then you open the knee up, if you will. It doesn't actually work this way in real life, but so you can see right here's a meniscus and here's a meniscus. Uh, here's the ACL, by the way. We're going to show you this model, which would be pulled right off of there. Yep, pull off so we can get a better view. So we're going to come in a little closer. All right. How are things looking, Jesse? We got it all in focus? All right. So here we've got the femur, the top where the cartilage is, where it, uh, actually comes in contact with, now this blue is the ACL, so we can, we that, know what it is, we can ignore that's it. That's so a ligament. Speak. Yep. Now this pulled up like this, I'm going to push it down, that is actually the meniscus. Or the cartilage. Or the cartilage. And it, it's sandwiched between the tibia and the uh, femur, and it doesn't pull up like this unless you have an injury, a right. tear. It could be pulled up like this. And if you look here, this black line represents a tear. Sometimes when it tears, it can actually fold up and over. And when that happens, the knee can actually lock up. And I've had many patients say, you know, sometimes I, I'm walking and it, it hurts really bad and I can't move it. And then I kind of wiggle around a little bit and it'll release and everything is okay again. Right. And that's when that flap kind of flips over and it locks up and then it gets back into place, so to speak. You can have floaters in there. A piece of meniscus could actually break off and float around in that knee capsule. So there's a number of things that can go wrong. And by the way, that is one of the indicators that maybe surgery is okay is if your knee is locking on sure, you. Right. If it isn't and you have a meniscus tear, most of the times, the recommendation is not to have surgery. Sure. Leave, leave, it, leave yeah, it heal. Leave it heal. It is a slow healer. There's not well, a, a lot of them won't heal. Right. Some of them won't heal, but you're better off not going in and having surgery because you're going to be the same way if you have surgery or you don't have surgery on some of the tears. Right. Right. So, um, But the locking is one of those things that... Uh, then they say maybe yeah. have surgery. Okay. Yeah. So what are we going to do to test for this? Now, again, the first sign is the locking. So sure. th that's one. We're going to go to number two. Uh, these are all tests that you can do at home by yourself. I use these. I didn't use these initially when I was practicing. Uh, but after a few years, I start using these, and they're easier, and I find them to be very accurate. You're yeah. going to sit down? No, I'm going to hold on to the chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> the first one is called the Fessley. Now, you're going to stand on one leg. So Bob and I are going to be doing it here. And then you're going to bend the knee five degrees. Just slightly. Yep. Just slightly. Just unlock it, basically. And then keep your foot planted to the floor and rotate your trunk and your hips and everything back and forth. If you experience pain when you do that, that's a positive sign. It doesn't mean 100% sure you have a meniscus tear, 
but it's a positive sign. It's leaning towards the fact that you might. Right. Then bend it a little bit more. Now, we want to go 15 degrees. That would be way too much. 15 degrees is not much more than 5 degrees. Right. Just a little bit more, and then rotate again. You're testing different areas of that meniscus when you're Flex it a little bit more. Now, this would hurt also in somebody that has arthritis, too. You're grinding the joint. Right. That's so. a good point. So that's where the symptoms can overlap. Right. And that's why this isn't always easy. But also do it on your other leg. Yep. Do it on both, and then you can compare and contrast between the two. Sure. Uh, the next one, the children's sign. I like to, I call it the duck walk. Sure. With, with my patients, I say we're going to do the duck walk. And I'll, I'll say. I'm going to let you do it. Do it this way, Brad. Oh, Okay. So they, well, I'm, I'll, I'll start this way. I say, yeah. point your toes out, shoulder width wide, or a little bit more, and then squat down. You can go down almost to your elbows, can go on your thighs like this, and good posture, of course, and then you simply walk like a duck. I remember one patient I had, this was my uh, benchmark. You know, he came in, he couldn't do this, and then after we did some exercises, within a couple weeks, he could start doing this, no pain. Interesting. There's very clear progress is being made. Sure. Uh, the next one is the Aegis sign. And uh, again, uh, we're not sure about the pronunciation on sure. this one. E-G-I-S? Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah. This is one um, I typically don't use, so I didn't, okay. I didn't dig into it very much. Sure. But uh, it's, it's similar to the one we just did. I don't even know it. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. So You're the one it. who showed it on the first video. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't use it either. Yeah. But, but you can you simply bring out your toes like this, and you squat down about to here. So we're we're not going uh, just a little squat. You're going to go down, and then up. So yeah, I see why we don't because it's like the ducks, you know. The right. Duck it, it's very similar. It's very similar. Uh, yeah. The only thing different with this one is, and this tests a different aspect of the. A meniscus is you go with the toes in. I oh, have sure. I have done this one with patients. I do remember this now. Yeah, yeah. I uh, wish patients, but yeah. uh, I don't like it because, like with myself, I feel uncomfortable doing this. I, I have healthy meniscus, so I, I'm so confident on the Thessaly and Childress. Sure. And, and I do an Apley one, which is more is for the PT. And then the the pair sign. I, I'm gonna have to lay down for yep, this one. Go ahead. This one's a nice one. To do on your oh look at that a pen in my pocket yeah thanks Bob uh, if it's my right knee that's in question first I'll do my left leg first uh, but the way it's done the the leg you're not testing is straight and you want to be you could do this in bed carpeted floor would be better put your foot so it's right on your knee and then you're simply going to drop down like this and just let it go down. And that puts a little stress on that meniscus. And if it's painful when you do that and the other one isn't, that's a positive sign. So, for example, if you did the Thessaly test and it was negative, they didn't hurt, but the Childress was positive, uh, the Aegis and the Parasign were all positive, now that's a pretty strong sign you have a meniscus tear. Sure. But not 100%. Right. Um, but it's, it's leaning pretty strong. And now when... You know, at least when you go in to see the doctor, if he does some of these tests, you know what he's doing. Exactly. And, or and, he, she's doing. You know, and if doing. you're functioning fine, but you have that pain and that uh, you'd like to get rid of it, then these exercises are going to be can be very helpful to get you into the hundred percent road of uh, which recovery. one do you want to show first, Brad? Well, why don't you, let's do the range of motion one, the okay. the Mulligan one. We'll sure. need a chair for this. Um, before you do this, if you have a difficulty extending your knee straight all the way or bending it all the way, that's the first thing you have to address is get the range of motion back, and then we'll go on to strengthening exercises. Sure. So and let's say it's not bending Yeah, and, all the and way. a lot of times what you can do is you can test it by bending it this way. Yep. With the, Let's say this is the involved one, the sure. one that's bothering you, and this is your better one. And you can test them a little bit to see, and you'll feel it. Mm -hmm. You can you can feel the difference between yep. um, side to side. Right. One just doesn't feel like it's going as well. So let's say I'm going to start with this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take my hand. I'm going to wrap it around the tibia and the fibula. And I'm actually going to rotate. Yeah. I'm turning my bones clockwise so, <laughs> so if you're on the left on your if you're on the left leg it'd be clockwise yep. 
if you're on the right leg, it'd be counterclockwise. Right. So the, actually, you know, if you could see this, he's kind of trying to grab the tibia, as you can and see. Turn and, it. Yep. And, and you're not, I'm exaggerating here, you're not going to get near that far, but that's the direction, a slight internal rotation, we'll call it. And then yep. once you get that established. I turn it, and then I start trying to bend a little bit more. Now, this should be painless. It should not increase your pain. Right. Okay? If it does, you do not you do, do it. You do not do it. Right. right. And th th this is a movement, believe it or not, it's called an accessory movement. This is a movement your knee normally does anyway. It does turn internally rotate a little bit. With flexion. With flexion. Mm -hmm. So it, you're helping it along. And I've had people that have had meniscus problems, and they did this, and they got more motion, and it decreased their pain. It just, yeah. for whatever reason, it works at times. So it's, it's definitely one I would try. This actually works really well if you have a stairway at home because oh, you sure. have different level steps. And, uh, you know, you got the wall and, and possibly the, the handrail that you can, if you need to have a balance issue, you can support yourself. I just thought of another one, Brad, too. Why don't you show the knee extension? Okay. I'll show another flexion one. Ooh. Just a real simple one. That I, A light went off in Bob's head. Yep, that's it exciting. That uh, doesn't happen very often. <laughs> the next one, you can do in a chair. You could do this one. Uh, in bed, but I'm going to show you in a chair because it's, it's convenient. Uh, you can put a pillow down. I just have um, my Pete's Choice balance pad because it's comfortable. Or you could actually just do it on the carpet. But what we want to do, let's say uh, your knee does not fully extend, and that's the one that hurts. But the other one does, and it's like, uh, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't fully extend. So we're going to help it out by giving a little passive range of motion. Uh, you can just, above the kneecap, you're going to put pressure down and go pressure on, pressure off. If it hurts when you do this and it just doesn't feel right after a couple repetitions, you're going to stop. It should only continue if the pain gets better and you get better range of motion. But you can actually rotate your toes to the outside or to the right if it's for your right leg and do the same thing. And you're just coming at that joint from a different angle and assess that way as well as going the other way. So we're going straight over to the right, over to the left, and you're going to do the uh, stretch that makes it feel better and allows it to straighten more. Uh, do it five to 10 repetitions. If it creates pain in one direction or if possibly in all three, then you would not do it at all. Right, and I'll just real quickly, Brad, I'll show another one for bending the knee. Again, if you're lacking flexion, you just take a towel and you put it between the calf and the hamstring here. Okay. And you, you have a little bit of a bunch there and you go like this, and he gaps. Gives and, a little distraction. Yeah, I've seen um, Mulligan do this, and I've seen uh, McKenzie do this. Okay. So Those are, if you're in the therapy world, you know, those, those, those guys are icons. They've been around for, right. uh, they've been around forever. I shouldn't say Mulligan. I think it was just McKenzie, to be honest with you. Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. Sorry, I gave Mulligan to, yeah. uh, kudos there. But, um, <laughs> and now, were you going to show a couple of strengthening exercises, yes, Fred? Yes, right. So. Uh, and this would be done on a carpeted floor. You could do it on a bed. Uh, but a floor, probably a little bit better. Uh, and we just, and this is particularly if your knee is still painful and it locks up possibly, um, and it's just not good enough to do squats or normal exercises. We're just going to simply say, this is the knee that has the problem, the pain. I'm going to keep the leg straight. My quads are tight and simply do straight leg raises up and down 10 times. Good control. Don't do them too fast. You don't have to. Don't let your foot touch the floor every time. It's suspended for ten repetitions. It's amazing. This looks easy, but I'm feeling my quad. Yeah, it works. Work. And if you want to go more than ten repetitions, you're welcome to. If you want to put an ankle weight on, you could do that. It's a great way to keep the knee strong while it's trying to heal. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so. The next one is do the hip abductor. Now, I'm going to switch legs so I can talk to you and, and see the camera at the same time. Let's pretend this is the knee now that has the problem. We're going to go like this. And, you know, this is probably more for the hip abductor, which is incredibly important for walking and stability, which does influence the knee. So you want to right. keep it going as well. Absolutely. Notice my toes are not pointed up. They're pointed straight ahead. And I don't have my leg out in front of me. It has to be in a straight line with my shoulders if we were looking from the top down. You got those nice stripes on your pants, Brad. That... Well, those are racing stripes, yeah, Bob. There you go. That's because I'm, I'm really fast runner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like my grandson. And then we're going to do this. 
Now you can do this one with your knee bent like this. Be careful for a hamstring cramp, then you would keep it straight and then reduce that possibility. And that really works that glute and some hamstring some as hamstring, well. Some hamstring, which yep. crosses the joint. Yep, so. and do 10 to 15 of those. And it's amazing, that little bit is yep. harder than you think. It makes a big difference. Yep. And, and again, by keeping the hip strong, it's going to affect the knee, but it's also some of the muscles cross the knee. Exactly. So you're going right. to work it off. Remember, Brad and I can oh. fix just about anything. Bob, that was a long video. Look yeah. at that time. I know. <laughs> Remember, Brad and I can fix just about anything. Except for. A broken heart. There you go. But we'll work on that too. Uh, yeah, we're not going to stop. We'll beat till that thing goes to 30 minutes. <laughs> That'll be a long video. Thanks. <laughs>